my first car video of 2023 first of many many i think third of january it is when i'm making this three days into the year and i'm going to start with a cracker and i'm not sure the rest of the year whether i'm going to be able to top something like this because i'm back at bt performance retro one of my favorite garages one of the most amazing garages that you will find in thailand already i've made a video on their 510 i've made a video on their 240z and i've made a video on their sunny kb110 which if you drop into the description i'll share the links down there because these people build cars like you wouldn't imagine they restore them rebuild them to the original period and then they do modifications that fit the period enhance the car and bring that modernness with that feel now this car also is cracking to do in 2023 because it's a 1973 car so this is 40 years old this year happy birthday this is the skyline 240k gt and it's a 1973 one best known as ken and mary ken and mary the couple who advertised this car when it was born when it was brand new and they've kind of given their name to the car they've become the part of folklore really this is a fourth generation skyline a c110 and they were built between 72 and 77 and 670,000 were sold a lot of that is put down to the advertising campaign with ken and mary which really energized japanese people made them give them a feel for this car and really want to go out and buy it so that's a lot of sales for the 70s for a car like this and in thailand it's also a legend but there's there's not a lot about and the ones that are about not always fantastic this one is just perfect this one is the most amazing ken and mary i have seen in my life and that's why i want to go through it today and this one I saw for the first time at Cars and Coffee Chiang Mai last year when it was just built. So it's been built about seven or eight months or so. It came to Mon Jod where Cars and Coffee was held, which is a beautiful backdrop lying in the field. It's just like, wow, it stood out and it's been on my mind to come and explain this car to you. Really get under the skin what they've done to this car. So six months i guess i'd need to look at my diary when it was cars and coffee Chiang Mai, and in fact i'll shoot a link to that in the description below as well because it was a beautiful event at mon john which is just a fantastic location anyway i saw that car this car there then this car has been around it was at the group a track day a couple of months ago at ganga chan circuit it looked fantastic on the circuit and it was a classic revival just last month at Chang Circuit. And again, it just looked fantastic. The car is just absolutely perfect. This generation of Skyline, it's just something that Nissan went overboard with the styling, with the shape. And people say there's a lot going on from the muscle car feel, a smaller muscle car feel. The designers were let off the leash to build something lavish and really to create a sub-brand because it doesn't have the OEM branding on it. It has the Skyline branding. They really wanted to create a Skyline sub-brand. With this, they hit the nail on the head. People say it's got a bit of the Citroen SM styling in it, which you kind of see as well there. Very distinct car. And the other thing I like about this car is, although it's got that big feel, it's quite a compact car and it weighs just over a thousand kilos so it's a fantastic platform if you want to modify it you want to tune it you want to go racing with it and that's what these guys do so a fantastic platform a really unique a really much loved car that's iconic so let's start with the engine bay because it's a work of art and it's spotless this looks like it just came out of the factory 40 years ago the original L24 engine, what they do is they build them up to L28 specification. So from the original 2.4, 
it's gone up to 2.9 litres so you're gaining half a litre a decent amount to get extra grunt out of so the standard crankshaft they keep but they put 88.5 millimeter Camiari pistons in it and they use Camiari con rods the engine also gets a high flow oil pump as well now the cylinder head they do a lot of work on that they really go back strip it out work the cylinder head combustion chamber is fully ported the airflow is bench tested on a superflow bench the inlet ports are 216 CFM now. They use 46 millimeter inlet valves, 38 millimeter exhaust valves, use Camiari valve springs, titanium retainers. They use new standard OEM rocker arms that they source. They use 79A Camiari camshafts, Tome adjustable cam sprockets and you've got these triple 45 Webers which sit on a Camiari inlet manifold and on the other side the exhaust header is 621 and you've got a big 3 inch out pipe getting the exhaust out of the engine so around the engine bay we've got MSD coil scorcher distributor the MSD coil works with an MSD 6 AL2 distributor box and it's got an adjustable rev limiter on it as well. Over here, we've got a Wilwood brake master cylinder, one inch. We've got a servo, which is taken from a larger Nissan model. And we've got this really nice strut brace right across the top of the engine. This is a fantastic engine bay. I could stand here and look at this for hours. The suspension is from BC Sport. At the front you've got adjustable shocks. At the rear you can adjust the springs. B&T, they want their cars to be dynamic on track. They don't build showroom queens. They're building retro style street races, track races, and they use them on the track. What I mentioned before, Group A Track Day, Chang Classic Revival, they're turning up with six, seven, eight cars in big numbers. They're adjusting them, getting them on the track. They want to be winning their categories. They want to be setting times. So they say the BC Sport one, it's quick to adjust. It's a good suspension. It works great for them. If you follow this company, Willwood are their go-to. They're using the Willwood big brake kit on this, four pot calipers on the front, slightly smaller caliper on the rear, Willwood all around. So I need to sit by the rear wheel to talk about the rear wheel and tyres because they're running a much bigger setup on the rear end. These Hayashi racing wheels look fantastic. They real nail the 70s street racing, track racing period. On the front they're running 8 by 15 inch wheels with Toyo 205 50 15 tyres. But on the rear we get much bigger 10 by 15 wheels that really stick out you can really feel it and they're running hand cooks on the back 245 45 15 looks fantastic i'm sure it works to get the power down but when the car is sitting here static and i'm making a video the visuals are just like wow when i say this garage are off the scale i really mean it here's an example this front spoiler it's actually smaller than the original. They have measured the original for drag. They want to get the top end up, but they don't want to reduce any stability. They've done it with this, and they've done it with the ducktail on the back, which I'm going to go and take you to have a look at now. 
and on the back we have this specially designed bespoke ducktail the B and T have developed for this car. Same with the front, they want to reduce the drag a bit, push the top end speed up, but without losing any of the stability. So they have been out, they have been testing, and they have designed this ducktail. And again, this is what I'm saying: who does this to a C110 build? Takes that time, that effort, that detail to really get it exactly into the window perfectly and that's why i love coming to this garage because i walk in here i walk out a few hours later and i got a lot more knowledge inside here anyway this was designed in-house and they also say 1973 the year of this car it was the year of the ducktail so they wanted a bit of a homage porsche with the 911 rsr they kind of put the ducktail on the map made it famous and I also wanted to stand right here to make this piece because you'll see in there that pale blue car. They have a 1973 911 RSR. Wow, what don't these guys have? They're just amazing. So here we have it. We have the ducktail and we have the father of the ducktail. The car comes in, it gets completely gutted and then the body shell goes to Bangkok where all the rust is removed, all the rot is cut out, it's all refabricated, and then it's painted. Paint is one of the key words for this company because every car, the color is fantastic and really nails it. They tell me they spent three months thinking about this color. They went through maybe 40 shades of blue, and I can tell you it was worth their effort. And this is an unusual color for a skyline. In Thailand, certainly most of them will be white or silver, but this is a very unusual color and it absolutely nails the car. It just adds to it. So all that effort, it is really, really worth it. And then all the details, the rear lights are new, the front lights are new, the chrome trims around the windows, they're all new or reproduction. The badges are all reproduction new wheel arch trim is new everything basically all the details are new and everything fits in there's a towing eye here on the back as well it's blended in you hardly even notice it the exhaust tailpipes really strong look fantastic so the outside is just basically a completely new car just like under the bonnet and inside and we'll get to the interior now so finally, let's sit inside this car and look at the interior. And the first thing when I get in this car is the smell. It feels brand new car smell because the whole cockpit has been completely redone like new. I could be jumping in this car in a showroom in Tokyo 40 years ago, seduced by the Ken and Mary lifestyle they were projecting thinking about buying this car should i buy this car have i got enough money is this going to be good for my image i'm transported back everything has been done new reproduction or refurbished the dashboard has been refurbished to really to oem spec new roof lining new sun visors door cards have been refurbished i like the 240 kgt badging in the door card as well and i also like that big aluminium trim which is original on the car on the bottom which kind of feels like it doesn't quite fit in but it gives it that racy that sporty feel it's a very very nice touch then the way they build things to keep in the period to make a car a street racer racer style we've got these ricardo bucket seats because they take these cars out on track it's not just a big gt cruiser you build that engine you build all this car you want to push it and these guys push them we've got a harness in here as well that's bolted into the back and some other little touches as well although this car was not branded by nissan we've got a datsun racing steering wheel and a Datsun gear knob. So we got the heritage of the tradition of this car in these two items as well. The dashboard, we got a video rev counter and it's been spun round so the zero is at the bottom, racing style. We've got video gauges 
and we've got an air fuel ratio meter as well which is additionally stuck in here so yeah it's really really nicely done the carpets are new the floor mats are new the rear seats are new it's fantastic inside it feels and smells like a new car i just want to finish with this logo on the back ren drive classica everyone knows ren drive it's a famous group of car owners in thailand passionate about their cars now this offshoot it's going to be focused on classic cars you're going to see seeing a lot more of this over the coming years and this logo when you see it is going to be on some pretty epic cars first time out for it and what a great place to start on this amazing 240k gt build